The 2020 election will be unlike anything this country's seen. We are now just one week away from Election Day, and we're tracking big races nationally and here at home. We're learning to live with it. People are learning to die with it. The coronavirus has killed more than 225,000 Americans. At the center of our local races, struggling local businesses amidst health precautions in place across the inland Northwest. As governor, I would put out the information with medical professionals, tell everyone what's going on, what they should do to protect themselves, and what might happen if they don't. Going around rallies with no mask, hobnobbing with the, the Trumpians, you know, we just can't. It's too dangerous to have a mini Trump right now in the middle of this pandemic. That's what it is at risk. Voters are making their voices heard early and at a distance. Local elections offices are processing ballots differently in this unprecedented time. Tonight, we're answering your questions. Do you want to know how to track your ballot online? Do you need to know if it's too late to register to vote? What questions do you have? Our panel of elections experts and Krem 2's voter access team are standing by to answer your questions live. Election 2020, your questions answered. A special edition of Krem 2 News at 6 starts right now. Well, this year's general election is like no other in history. Voters are weighing in on tremendously important issues and our local elections offices are facing more challenges than ever. So as you prepare to vote or even after you have cast your ballot, Krem2 wants to answer your questions about voting in this general election. And tonight we have invited a panel of experts, including our local elections officials and our voter access team to answer your questions live. Good evening and thank you for joining a special edition of Krem2 News at 6. We are devoting most of our time to our special election 2020. 20, your questions answered. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Whitney Ward. So you can text us your questions right now to 509 448 2000 and we will direct your questions to our experts. Tonight we are joined by Vicki Dalton, the Spokane County Auditor and Jim Brannon, the Kootenai County Clerk. So thank you both for being here with us this evening. So one question many voters have, what actually happens to my ballot when it arrives at the elections office? How do they make sure my vote is properly counted and kept secret? Yeah, one of our political reporters, Casey Decker, got a tour of the entire process. Here's a basic look at what it, how it looks start to finish. When ballots arrive at the office, they're placed into trays and brought to a secure room until it's time to sort. The sorting machine imprints a date and tracking number, then quickly scans the envelope. In the first pass sort, if ballots come over on this side, that means there's something wrong with them, like a missing signature. If everything's normal, they come over here where they're divided up by legislative district. The next step is making sure the signature on the envelope matches the signature on your voter registration form. A worker trained by the Washington State Patrol compares the two images on their computer. If all is good, they okay the ballot. If the signatures don't match, they pass it on to another trained employee. That worker then looks at the physical envelope and compares it to the signature on file. If both workers decide the signatures don't match, then the voter will be sent one of these forms that they'll need to fill out for their ballot to be counted. Now it's time to go back through the sorter. This time the envelopes get broken down even further by precinct group. Up to 200 ballots will go together in a tray and stay together for the rest of the process. A piece of paper called the control sheet helps workers keep track of those trays and make sure they always have the right number of ballots. The next worker makes sure of that number and then finally can open the envelope with the help of a machine. They then take out the contents, ballots enclosed in privacy envelopes. If the ballot doesn't have a privacy envelope, the worker will give it one. The bigger envelope is stored securely and separately. The smaller envelopes go back into the tray and onto the next step. Now that the ballots are totally anonymous, they can finally come out of the envelopes. Here, workers again double check the count and then make sure that the ballot is ready for the tabulation machine. Any ballots that are crumpled or have spills or otherwise might be hard for the machine to read get set aside. A specialized team of two then fills out the voters' choices on a fresh ballot so it can be tabulated. Finally, it's time to count the votes. The tabulation machine scans all the ballots. If it notices something strange, like a mark it can't read, that gets saved in the computer. Then, two different workers look at the scanned image to determine what the ballot says. If they both don't agree, a supervisor is brought in to make the call. Finally, the ballot are boxed up and stored for up to 22 months. Casey Decker, Krem 2 News.
A lot of you have reached out to us asking how you can make sure your ballot was accepted by your local elections office. And turns out there's a really easy way to check. Just go to the website votewa, one word, votewa.gov. That'll bring up this screen right here. So you'll be asked to put in your first name, your last name, and then your date of birth right there at the bottom. You'll hit enter. That'll bring up this next screen right here. You can see this is mine. It has my name on there right there, along with my address. You'll go to the menu button from here. It'll bring up a drop down menu. You'll click on ballot status on the left hand side right there. It'll take a second for it to process and then it'll show you for the general election right there November 3rd on the 8th of October right there my ballot was sent to me and if I scroll up a bit further right here on the 20th of October you can see my ballot was accepted by the elections office now to be completely clear here my wife and I dropped our ballots in the ballot drop box at the South Hill Library on Perry Street and it did take a couple of days for it to reflect that my ballot was accepted after we dropped it in there but again a really easy way to check that website votewa gov And yesterday was the last day to register to vote online in Washington, although you can still register in person up until 8 p.m. on Election Day. Now in Spokane County, there are two places you can do that. One is at the Center Place Event Center in the Valley. The other one, it's going to depend on which day you go, because from now until the 31st, go to the elections office near the courthouse. Next Monday and Tuesday, otherwise known as Election Day, you're going to need to go to the Spokane Arena, and that's because they're just expecting such a huge influx of last minute voters that they just wanted the extra space. All of those locations are open Monday through Friday from 830 to 4 p.m. except on Election Day when they will stay open until 8. And in Idaho, online voter registration already ended on the 9th, but you can still register to vote, but you have to do it in person on Election Day. November 3rd, you can do so at any polling place. All absentee ballots have to be dropped off by 8 p.m. to that location. If you do mail in your absentee ballot, you want to give it plenty of time to get to the elections office because they need to have it in hand by November 3rd. For more information about these deadlines in both states, just text the word vote to 509-448-2000. So right now, hundreds of thousands of voters in Spokane County have already returned their ballots, a full 51% as of yesterday. Tonight we are joined by Spokane County Auditor Vicki Dalton, who will be helping us answer your questions tonight. Vicki has overseen six presidential elections and has seen it all from the days of the hanging chads to scanning ballots. Vicki, first off, thank you for joining us. And I want to start, can you just give us kind of a snapshot about where we stand right now? We keep hearing that interest in this election is high. Where do we stand in terms of registration and ballots return compared to previous elections? Well, voters are certainly interested in this particular election. We are now over 361,000 registered voters. And as of tonight, we have 198,000 ballots here at Election Central. Voters want to have their say in this election. Vicki, a quick question uh, that I have is, will voters be notified if their ballot is actually rejected somewhere through that process? Certainly, if um, a ballot is challenged for any reason that the voter can cure, the voter will receive a letter from us, usually just within a few days of that status change showing up on votewa.gov. So all voters have to do is just follow the instructions in the letter and then put it in the envelope and get that envelope back to us. And voters have until November 23rd to return that completed cure to us to have their ballots counted. Vicki, I know I'm being a bit redundant here, but we've received this question or kind of a variation of this question from a few different viewers asking us, you know, there's several options where your vote, your vote, your ballot rather can be accepted mm -hmm. or it can be rejected or challenged. Can you walk us through e walk us through each one of those and explain what you should do if it's not immediately accepted? So a voter can see if we've gotten the ballot back, it'll say received. After that, then we look at the signature, and the signature will either be accepted or challenged. If your signature is accepted, that means it's gonna go to opening and that ballot is gonna be counted. If the signature is challenged or there's some other problem that prevents the ballot, the, the envelope actually, from being processed, then there's gonna be a whole list of reason codes. It's gonna say challenged, and then it's gonna give a very brief phrase that tells you what the problem is. And almost all of those phrases that are going to show up, the voter has the opportunity to fix the problem, have their ballot counted, 
there's only a couple of phrases, such as deceased or um, moved, which means moved out of state, that would keep that ballot from being ultimately cured and counted. So voters, if you see something there, wait a few days, you're gonna get a letter in the mail that tells you what to do to solve that problem to cure your ballot and get it counted. Also, this is a question that we got from Creme viewer Roger Towell. He's asking, can someone who's already voted and sent in their ballot actually go back and change their vote or re-vote prior to election day? Um, the short answer is no. Okay. Once you've cast a ballot and we've received that ballot in hand, that is the cast ballot. Now, the only time that might change is if you have moved and you register with a new address, then we will send you a new ballot as long as we haven't received the first ballot from your old address. So there's a few little cases like that where there might be two ballots in play for a single voter, but only one of those ballots will be counted and just changing your mind is not a reason for a new ballot, sorry. All right, Vicki, hang tight if you would. We'll check back in with you later on our broadcast. I know you're extremely busy. This is a busy time of year for you, so we appreciate your time. We'll check back in with you in a few moments. Yes, in the meantime, we want to encourage you at home to text those election and voting questions throughout the next hour. We have a team working hard right now to answer those questions. Yeah, just text them our way at 509-448-2000, and we'll direct your questions to our experts.